Silver bells, silver bells. Batman smells, Batman smells. And Robin laid an egg. Batmobile lost its wheel, and the Joker got away. <laughs> Don't ask why this tree's a rocket. Welcome to episode 16 of the Laser Comb Podcast. Uh, this is the third week in our current uh, Christmas month where we are reviewing uh, Christmas ep- themed episodes of random TV shows Ooh. as chosen by Twitter polls. I'm one of your hosts, Christopher Siege. Hi, I'm Neo Cal. And this week on the Laser Comb Podcast, we are covering episodes 11 and 12 of the fourth season of Married with Children. Uh, a show that I, uh, a show that ran from 1987 to 1997 for a full uh, 11 seasons, uh, comprised of 259 episodes. This is a show that I grew up watching as someone who, I was born in 1985, so I was a kid in the early 90s. The show was not appropriate for me to be watching in like 1991, 1992, but God damn it, I watched it anyway, and I fucking loved it. I have a lot of nostalgia for this show. Uh, But uh, yeah, so Christmas-themed episodes, as I mentioned, episodes 11 and 12 of season four. They are the episode overall. What are they? Uh, I can't remember what we... Episodes 68 and 69. Nice. Nice. (laughs) <laughs> a merry nice miss a merry nice miss uh so these episodes are called uh it's a bundy full life uh part one and part two a uh, nice little parody of it's a wonderful life which uh not not episode one but episode two of this two-parter uh kind of uh parodies the 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 format of the the movie the christmas classic if you will it's a wonderful life which right fun fact i've never seen it in its entirety oh in its entirety one of those things that's always on like a cable channel when you were growing up oh yeah yeah but it was was always on tv caught at the beginning (laughs) it was always on tv at some some relative's house in uh when you're a child on christmas morning uh same with uh uh what's the kid with the the bb gun um oh a christmas story yes i always caught that like 10 minutes in to 10 minutes out never i I, i've yeah i i i haven't seen the movie i i haven't seen that movie in its entirety like i don't think ever maybe when i was like four or five years old when i was really really young I've a I've, I've a pieced friend. it I, together. I've pieced I, it together. <laughs> I have a friend who tells me that uh, that's complete sacrilege, and I'm like, "Well, what do you want from me, lady?" <laughs> well, if you piece it together, all the parts I've seen, I've seen it like ten times, but just not in its entirety. I've seen the begin first fifteen minutes like twenty times. I've seen the <laughs> the last like right. hour like ten times. So we I, we've basically watched it, right? Ba- yeah. uh, sure, uh, it's no uh, it, it's no classic in the the vein of uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. That's all I'm gonna say. It's no my, classic like um, my personal the favorite. Santa Claus starring Tim Allen. Uh, also one of my personal favorites. Uh, those two uh, those two films honestly are probably like the most consistent uh re-watches for me every holiday season i've already watched christmas oh. vacation twice in the past couple months i knew you liked santa claus but i wasn't i didn't realize it was like one of your oh it, yeah your it, go-tos. It, yeah it's top tier for me i i love the santa claus uh but that's not what we're talking about here today on the laser Comb podcast no we are talking about married with children uh so a little bit about what uh married with children is about uh married with children was a comedy a sitcom uh uh three camera sitcom uh, as was common uh at the time uh live studio audience uh it uh aired on fox it was one of 
it was one of the original original like um it was one of the first original programs on the the Fox network which was at the time in American television and uh listeners I'm saying this as a Canadian so uh this is all this is going to be purely academic for me um but uh American television uh going in leading into the 80s was not uh dominated by the the big three of network uh te- television networks uh cbs nbc and abc uh fox comes along in the mid 80s as a startup to become uh the fourth fourth major network and uh they ended up uh hitting it big with uh shows like this shows like the simpsons mm. kind of cemented them uh I believe this aired on Sunday nights uh, along with The Simpsons. So, and typical uh, typical network TV at the time, anyway, uh, sitcoms would air during the week, uh, never on the weekends, usually yeah. Monday to Thursday. Uh, and then uh, uh, networks tried experimenting with that. Like I think NB- NBC in the 90s had uh, TGIF. So they had their uh, Friday night programming block, which was... Uh, which was unusual for the time and Fox carved out their own niche by doing uh half hour sitcoms on Sunday nights, which. Ah, uh, so began the family Sunday evening watching TV. Uh, which, which uh, still continues to this day. Like I think uh, the Simpsons and family guy and like new episodes are. Yeah. Yeah. uh, Any of, uh, Seth MacFarlane's like 50 other shows that he has going on at any given time uh, all air on, a lot of projects. on Sundays. Yeah, yeah. Um uh show was a show was a big hit. It was very controversial because uh if if you go back like it's the show's kind of tame by today's standards especially when you start looking at like a lot of comedies that we see on uh on cable networks but for uh network tv free network over the air television especially for the mid 80s the show wa- was quite uh the the content being presented was quite unusual to to get like crass like kind of pg13 level content on free uh, I can american see that. family yeah. television um I love this show. Uh, I loved it when I was a child. Uh, off air, Cal had mentioned that this show was just a little beyond him when he was a child. But oh, it me... wasn't beyond me. I just didn't Sorry. like it. Oh, fair <laughs> enough. Um, I absolutely adored this show when I was a kid. Like, I, I have a lot of fond memories of being like seven years old in 1992, watching this show in prime time, like at my grandfather's house, uh, while my mom and my grandma were off like playing bingo (laughs) yeah i guess it was just um it was like kind of slow and predictable and everyone's just mean there were just just losses and no wins and i didn't have time for that i had video games and like bikes to ride and like rocks to throw at other kids you know (laughs) Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, like I, I had those things too, but I just, I, I gravitated to toward this show. Um, I come from a very, uh, a, a very mean spirited family, mm. just in general. They, they, they'll never admit to it, but they're all pretty mean spirited people. Um, and I think, uh, I, I, even watching this now, like I just uh, rewatched these episodes uh, maybe two hours ago uh, prior to recording. Even now, watching this show, like I, th- there, there, there's something about it that I just connect with. I, I, it's one of those things. It's like Seinfeld. A lot of people are like, eh, I never really liked Seinfeld. Yeah, I and they'll watch it in Seinfeld their 30s either. and they go, wait, I'm having the opposite like a fact i'm like oh well maybe maybe i would like this now that i'm now that i'm older uh whereas when i was young i loved seinfeld yeah i never i never got into seinfeld uh my my sister uh shout out to her uh she's undoubtedly not listening to this but shout out to you bonnie uh she's a big uh a big seinfeld fan oh is she yeah 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 Uh, we uh we we almost reviewed an episode of Seinfeld on this on this very podcast for uh for Christmas month. So uh maybe maybe next year. Maybe it'll go on a, a future hole 
at some point on Twitter. Uh, yeah, I'm so a big what... fan of the uh, the uh, the Festivus episode, as you know. <laughs> yes, indeed. So what the show is about? The show is about uh, uh, the the Bundys, a family living in Chicago. Weirdly enough, there were a lot of uh, TV and movies based in set in Chicago around this time. Like oh, Roseanne. the 80s, every even movies. Yeah, Roseanne, another sitcom from uh, that uh, aired around the same time as uh, Married with Children, was also set in Chicago. The Home Alone movies were set in Chicago. Home Alone. Um, uh, Breakfast Club. Yeah, I, I'm not is sure. It, is in Chicago. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure what it was, what the fascination with Chicago was in, uh, in American media in the 1980s. But... Uh, well, uh, so yeah, it's about the Bundy family, uh, lower middle class family living in the uh, living in the suburbs of Chicago. Uh, uh, the 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 patriarch of the family is uh, Al Bundy, uh, played by Ed O'Neill. He's a uh, women's shoe salesman, and they like their house is kind of gaudy and like not. It's kind of ugly looking by design, of course, but like, I kind of wonder though, I'm like, how does a women's shoe salesman who they joke makes like minimum wage frequently throughout the series? I'm like, how the fuck does he pay for a house that big? Like, it's ugly and it looks like shit, but it's a pretty, Uh, pretty damn big house. Hello, dear millennial. (laughs) Um, My aunt supported like, she didn't have a her partner. Her partner was in uh, just wasn't wasn't there and um, right. supported uh, my grandma, her mom. So like, and her two kids, two story house, big ass backyard. Don't know what to tell you. That's just how it used to be, my dude. <laughs> if you're somewhat responsible with, but I I get your point though. Like, it, his it wife doesn't an- work. What 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 is the quote? It, it it isn't always like they say it is, but sometimes it do. People don't think it be like it is, but it do. But it do, right? Actual quote from a uh, 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 former uh, uh, major league baseball player. That's yeah, my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Actual thing uh, he said on uh, uh, he said in a newspaper newspaper article when he was being interviewed. I looked into this a little while ago. I was like, yeah. wow. Wow, that Let's was an look actual into thing. The, the meme behind the the dream. Uh, <laughs> the meme behind the so, dream. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what? So, so yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. You said his his wife, uh, Peggy, who is paid, Peggy. played by um, uh, uh, Katie Siegel, who would later go on to be the voice of um, Lila. Lila in Futurama, uh, a show you're very fond of, I believe. Very. Uh, my uh, my partner walked in when I was watching this earlier, and it's just like, why is her? Why does she sound like I'm like Leela from Futurama? Yeah, because she's the voice actress for Leela from Futurama. <laughs> uh, like, she oh, <laughs> uh, she later also went on to have a recurring ro- role in uh, one of my favorite TV shows of all time, The Shield. Right, which um. Maybe we'll cover a random episode of on this podcast at some point, but honestly, I'd kind of rather just do a podcast dedicated to that show in its entirety at some time down the road. Right, uh, right. But, but but yeah, she she had a recurring role on The Shield as well. Uh, yeah, she doesn't work, so stay at home wife. Stay stay at home wife, but also doesn't cook. But it, but also doesn't cook or clean, and that's a frequent uh, joke recurring joke in the Mm -hmm. show uh they have two kids uh bud played by uh can't remember his name right now off the top of my head and he's kind of a uh sarcastic uh kind of he he's presented as being kind of a loser like he he's smart ish like he's kind of clever and cunning in his own right at times yeah but yeah he he's kind of presented as being a loser and in later seasons uh, uh a running joke is that he can't get laid oh Cause... once he gets old yeah because once he gets older yeah 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 because uh, by the time the uh this show as i mentioned ran for 11 seasons so by the time the show uh ended like the the yeah, kids are both, are both growing. quite a bit 
yeah, they're both grown adults by the time the, the show ends. Uh, and uh, his sister, who is played by uh, Christina Applegate, whom I've a, I'm a huge fan of. I think Christina Applegate is a as is a national treasure as a comedic actress. And she's um, uh, she's great in this show. Like she she definitely gets better as she gets older, but she's still great in this show in her own right. She's on a show on uh, Netflix currently um opposite uh I can't remember her name now, but she's in um has a recurring role in the MCU as Hawkeye's wife. Uh, Linda right. Cardellini, I think might be. Anyway, so Christina Applegate has a show on Netflix called Dead to Me, uh, starring opposite her, uh, which is uh, really, really good. Uh, check that out. I believe it's been renewed for a third and final season. Um, maybe this is uh, a little telling, but as a kid and as a teenager and just like growing up alongside the show, Never found the daughter attractive. Always found the mom attractive. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> and I, when I was a teenager, I was like, man, he's not like doing his wife. Someone's doing his wife. It's not him, <laughs> but. <laughs> uh, a couple uh, 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 rounding out the, the cast is uh, uh, Peggy, Al and Peggy's next door neighbors, the Rhodes family, Steve and Marcy. The normal people. The normal people. Um, <laughs> and what this show kind of does is it like it portrays like right from the beginning, it portrays them as being very stereotypically normal and just being like completely like off put by how crass and uh, real, for lack of a better word, uh, the Bundy family is. But over time, the show kind of starts revealing that the roads are just as fucked up as the Bundys are. They just keep it behind closed doors. Dives into uh, the side characters more as it establishes the the world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, watching uh, watching the show as an adult, uh, I'm actually a big fan of Steve, just in general <laughs> as a character. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think I think Steve Rhodes is pretty great. Unfortunately, he he leaves the series at some point. Uh, I think not too long after this. Uh, interestingly enough, the the guy who plays the uh, replacement husband for Peggy in she gets part remarried, two, right? She gets well, well. We'll get into it. But we'll the, get into that. Okay. The actor who plays the Peggy's husband in his like angel angelic dream sequence in part two of this episode yeah, actually yeah. ends up uh, returning to the show to play Marcy's new husband. He replaced that I actor. Thought he looked familiar. That I'm actor. Like... Re that actor replaces Steve in the show as uh, Jefferson. <laughs> so when I was watching this earlier, I, I was I like, like I was like, wait, what the fuck, <laughs> Jefferson? Right, because having watched it all, when you come back, it's like, wait, who is this guy? I, I'm like, oh. I'm like, oh, that that that's the actor who plays Jefferson. What's he doing here? I guess he made an impression on the uh, the people behind this show. Interesting that genetically, him and Peggy's uh, uh, that's kids exact, are exactly the same. That's exactly what I was thinking earlier. <laughs> they <laughs> we'll live in the it, exact. We'll, that. we'll 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 get into that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so the the show is kind of just about like the the misadventures that the Bundy family get into, and usually how they end up roping their next door neighbors into their bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so bless their it, hearts. Bless their hearts. Uh, so it's a Bundy full life. Uh, parts one and two. They originally aired on December seventeenth, nineteen eighty nine. They are uh, episode, as I mentioned, episodes 11 and 12 of season four and uh, episodes 68 and 69. Nice. Overall <laughs> in Married with Children. Uh, so part one uh, opens up with. Uh, uh, Al Family just lounging as yeah, usual. Fa uh, family just lounging as usual. Uh, Al comes home and. Uh, gets in like typical banter with uh, with his family, and yeah, it's Christmas time, and uh, Al uh, 
uh, mentions to Peggy, he's like, yeah, so you know, like what uh, those, you know, what those Christmas clubs are. And she makes some comment about it being like, uh, like uh, a thing, a shitty that, savings account, a, a shitty savings account that like losers put money into that gets them two percent interest instead of five percent interest. And uh, Al's like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> so I have one of those. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> already, I'm like, this is why I like this show. <laughs> uh, um, I think what was off putting for me, and it's it's still a barrier of entry for me is <clears throat> it's the, the the show revolves around constantly digging at each other to such an extent that it starts to border on the very unrealistic for me like it's just joke after joke after joke after joke about to be fair to each other <laughs> to be fair when i was watching this earlier i'm like this is a very uh, abusive and toxic family environment <laughs> but there's well, like a lightly one it's just they keep it up <laughs> but but to me there's just there's something really relatable about all of this which i mean i guess that says something about my family life but <laughs> the real to- the real abusive or toxic um like family is a lot more stressful and less like jovial. This is like lighthearted, like ribbing, but constant. So right. I, I found it a little. Um, it's like people complain about Family Guy having like the same joke and like running with it too long. That's kind of like the entirety of uh, Married with Children. That is a complaint that I myself have of Family Guy. I have that same uh, problem with South Park (laughs) as well. Uh, I don't have that issue here with this show. Yeah, it's uh, it it is here in it is here in broad strokes. Um, When's the last time you watched South Park? Uh, I watched their pandemic special last year. I, I did not. Uh, I've been told to go and watch it. <laughs> uh, I thought very little of it, if I'm being perfectly honest. Take that, South Park. No, but um, I, I, apart from just, I'm not just here to complain about it. Um, I liked, like, uh, I found myself enjoying this. And I was like, oh, and I would not have, like, 10, 15 years ago. Um, so... Well, uh, to give you an idea how much I enjoy this show, I actually own the entire series on iTunes. You do? Uh, you do? Because I, uh, not even realizing that there were 259 episodes of this, I, one night, uh, admittedly while I was intoxicated, uh, bought you? a com- I bought a complete series pass of uh, the show on iTunes because it was on sale for twenty nine ninety nine, And I'm like, wow, all of Married with Children? For thirty bucks, sure, why not? Give and <laughs> given that I only watched the like a couple of episodes of this at a time, like here and there, like mm-hmm. this is gonna last me years. Like I'm, it's gonna take me years to get through all of this. Yeah, I. It's one of those shows that it's not bingeable, but I don't mean that in like a bad way. Well, it's not designed to be. Yeah, exactly. And nothing was back then. No, nothing was back then. It's yeah. designed to be easily digestible. Uh, and that's how episodic TV was, honestly, until like the, the early 2000s in the era of like cable dramas, serialized cable dramas, basically. Uh, it's designed to be something that you can just like sit down and watch a random episode of and understand exactly what's going on. <clears throat> It's why understand Order... what's going on. You don't need to have seen the five episodes preceding it. It's why Law and Order is structured the way it is, and that's like that's just how network TV was built. It's still how network TV is designed, built. And I um, and I there's some power to that, and we've ranted about this probably plenty of times. But there's power to that because sometimes you just want to watch something, and it be a whole story, right? You don't want, like, you can't watch season two, episode five of Game of Thrones and go, oh, cool. And then, yeah, (laughs) yeah. Yeah, and then, like, 
like, you know, go uh, without asking a hundred questions and something happens. And this is why that design was kind of smart. If you miss an episode or a two of something where the plot is what's the term uh, serialized or serial uh this is episodic serialized is something like game of thrones yeah so if you, if you miss an episode or two of something that's serialized you want to stop until you can catch up so you lose viewer base like viewers yeah well and that like uh shows like that episodic tv shows like this were uh designed around the idea that people have lives yeah, people's lives. <laughs> people's lives don't revolve around like making sure that they catch the next episode of Law and Order. You know, Mondays at eight, every good, single week. Good summary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, be because people have lives and do other things that don't necessarily revolve around watching television at a specific time. Uh, you 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 have to make TV that is designed so if you just happen to catch it on a, a random monday night at eight o'clock that you're going to be able to sit and enjoy it and watch the whole thing and feel fulfilled and indeed even though this is a, a two-parter they're they're both fine if you if you miss the other one yeah they're uh, in, indeed they're, they're part surprisingly two last time yeah but even yeah. part two is like last time i'm married with children and it just shows you like three scenes and it's like not enough money for Christmas, blah yeah. blah blah. Boom. Yeah, and I'm so, like, was uh, that necessary? <laughs> but that's so, part of the humor of the show. Of the show. So to blow through episode one because yeah. episode one is relatively like to the overall plot, overall arc of this two parter. Episode what goes on in episode one isn't all that important. No, it's it hits the beats. Um, neighbors come over, like you mentioned. Um, of the, uh, the Al mentions because he is saved. So uh, going back to yeah, uh, yeah. beginning of the episode, Al mentions that he has saved up a whole bunch of money. We later find out that it's two hundred and eighty dollars, which is comical unto itself. <laughs> a whole year? Who? Yeah, I mean that's yeah. that's more than zero, I guess. But it is. Yeah, I mean I'd be happy with two hundred and eighty dollars right now. Right. Um. But yeah, so uh, Al has saved up some money with this like shitty savings account that he has opened up and he announces that uh, it's going to be a truly Bundy Christmas because he is going to buy the family Christmas gifts this year. Hell yeah. So we uh, we we it's implied that that's not a, a regular thing that that goes on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Denny's is. Yeah, they're, they're, Christmas. Okay, so their annual, uh, their annual um, uh, Bundy uh, Denny's Christmas feast. Yeah, which uh, kind of made that. me kind of made me chuckle because, uh, and I don't know, I haven't mentioned this on the podcast before, but like I've talked about this privately with just about everyone I know. I'm sure I've talked about it with you, Cal. My family, um, <laughs> in Canada, there is a chain of restaurants called White Spot. There sure is. <laughs> there sure is. Uh, it's very much on the level of Denny's. It's like, it's only like one step above fast food. It's like, it's like sit down fast food, essentially. On the top totem pole, right? There's like McDonald's, then the expensive, then Wendy's, then expensive fast food, like KFC and Dairy Queen. <laughs> yeah. Right? Then there's Denny's and barely above that is White Spot. Yeah, White Spot is very much, uh, and they're all over Canada. I I think it's a strictly uh, Canadian. Uh, uh, you get the big pirate boat. It's it's a hoot for the whole but, family. But, but, but yeah, it's fun for the whole family. <laughs> but but yeah, White Spot is very much like low class eating, and um, that that was not my impression of uh, of White Spot when I was growing <laughs> up. Because oh my, same. My my family uh, always treated White Spot like it was the holy grail of like fancy ass places <laughs> to go. Like I've even heard uh, my grandfather uh, say that like, oh, you you put on a dress shirt and tie when you go to to White Spot, and I'm like, really, really. So when so, did you start looking behind the curtain? Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna. <laughs> so. 
<laughs> this episode, them like treating Denny's like it's this like annual like Christmas like fancy excursion really hit home for me <laughs> because not because of Denny's, but because of White Spot. For us, it was KFC. <laughs> And my oh, and also my my mom, uh, in particular, would always complain. We we went to White Spot occasionally when I was a child, uh, only for special occasions, of course. Of course, yeah, yeah. And you you made sure you you put on a dress shirt and tie. It's like going uh, to church, goddamn it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my my mom would always complain that White Spot was so expensive, and like as an adult, like go who and I I eat out at restaurants quite regularly. It's part of the reason why I'm broke all the time. It's because I spend so much money on eating out. I really like going dining out, um, but going to restaurants a lot as an adult and then going to White Spot, I'm like, it's fucking cheap. You can get like I lunch. I can't even tell you what how you expensive get, it is. I you can get lunch forever. for like you can get a burger and fries and a drink for like twelve bucks. Actually, yeah, <laughs> Canadian, yeah, Canadian. So I'm like, wow, this is what this, this is fine dining in my 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 low class family. Uh, I kind of like Denny's eyes. more. Uh, I'm not a fan of either of them personally, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, for us, like the the big deal was uh, KFC. Did you know that like KFC is like crit like Christmas time food in Japan? No, I didn't. Like a, it's like a they don't really understand what <laughs> this is speaking generally and jovially. They don't really understand Christmas, but they like the idea of it. And somehow KFC got its uh kind of kind of like Abed in uh community. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's always they've always been a fan. And so like KFC and like chicken and gravy and stuff. And I see see the point. It's like turkey. Right. right. Like turkey and, and Poultry, gravy and whatever. Yeah. yeah. And so KFC and like bringing KFC with you and getting together and like eating it is like kind of like a, a thing in japan because they don't have very strong christmas there is like valentine's right you, like you know how here it's just like nobody takes it seriously and puts up valentine's decorations and whatever there's there's christmas decorations i, in japan I, I don't know they... i had an ex who was like fucking rotundo for valentine's day okay apart from <laughs> really uh kelly yeah, she was fucking rotundo for for Valentine's Day. Yeah, and so Sh the... Sh shout out to my ex Kelly, terrible human being. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, I had found out through watching media and talking um, with friends. Uh, a lot of them moved back, um, so very doubtful that they're watching this. But uh, Risa uh, Moiko, hello. <laughs> um, yeah, it's kind of just like a oh on christmas we're gonna go and hang out with blah 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 and like eat kfc they still do lights and trees and stuff like that but it's not a an integral like take two weeks off of like work right. and like spend thousands of dollars to go across the country and visit your relatives kind of kind of thing well, if you're a if you're a millennial working retail, like taking time off around Christmas is basically taboo. Basically taboo. How dare you? How dare you put your happiness above the <laughs> uh, above the company? God, above the company's. Gosh, interests. dang it! Um, I actually this year uh, in particular, which at the time of recording, Christmas is like literally next weekend. Um, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day follow my regular days off. So I don't even get like an extra day off or anything. I'm just working my usual fucking work week. And then the following week, same old fucking work week. I'm like, huh. great. That that's cool. Thanks. Oh, oh. Thanks. Thanks, calendar. <laughs> You're welcome, Christopher. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> calendar man wait isn't there an actual villain called calendar man there sure is he's a batman villain calendar. uh he uh featured in uh batman the long halloween which is one of the greatest batman stories ever told uh huge huge right. I, i'm a huge huge even with a y huge fan of batman the long halloween have been since the 90s the long halloween yeah uh 
it is one of the definitive Batman stories. Like, basically, like, if you want to read, like, definitive Batman, like, read The Dark Knight Returns, read Batman The Long Halloween, and perhaps uh, Batman Nightfall, and uh, Batman No Man's Land. Those are probably, like, to me, those are, like, all top-tier Batman stories. Oh, I'll have to bug you about that uh, later. Maybe I'll check him out on Comixology. Yeah, uh, highly, highly, highly recommend Batman The Long Halloween. There's been element elements of that uh, that story, because it's, nowadays it's just available as, like, one, like, big, like, trade paperback. But originally it was published as 12 issues, so it was a maxi series. Uh, okay. Elements of that series were uh, uh, served as the inspiration for uh, Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy, especially um, the Dark Knight itself, the the second oh. film in the trilogy. Ooh, okay. Uh, it's light influences, but uh, but it's yeah, there. Yeah. Batman: The Long okay. Halloween. Today I learned. So, uh, are we at the part where um, Al's wife is in her like sexy? uh like christmas outfit <laughs> uh sure sure we'll go there <laughs> oh no, they hide I don't, from I their don't neighbors have... right because uh, they're afraid they're carolers yeah <laughs> uh, uh, uh itunes is being stupid for me right now so i don't have the episodes in front of me so i'm kind of just going by memory oh okay yeah well y- you probably got it um they hide from would-be carolers it's their neighbors as we've discussed, right? Um, right. Turns out that uh, an ongoing theme, like you had already pointed out, is um, what's his name? Is um, like a mama's boy. Uh yeah, yeah. Steve. Steve. It's uh, he. Steve. He's he's a um, uh, he's a straight arrow, straight edge type. Yeah. And uh, he he announces that he's going home for the holidays, and uh, there's. Uh, his wife Marcy mentions that he's a bit of a mommy's boy and he protests that but then there's a honk he's like oh it must be my taxi but then his mom yells out and his mom yells out to that she's there to pick him up and Steve and Marcy are about to kiss but as soon as he hears that his mom is calling him he immediately pulls away from Marcy and is like coming mother and dashes out the door I, I actually thought that was funny and uh, Marcy then laments about how she's going to be alone for, for Christmas as Peggy is, like, trying to, like, push her out the door. And yeah, she's, she's like, like oh, oh, maybe I could spend it with, like, friends or something like that. And Peggy's like, well, goodbye. <laughs> yeah, shuts the door on her. And then she's like, I feel so bad for Marcy. <laughs> See, that guy, like, that kind of humor, That's I good. appreciate. Yeah. Um, and then we're kind of like in bed uh, with um, Alan Peggy. Alan Peggy, and um, she's in her tasteful Christmas present lingerie. Yeah, she she's wearing a like nightgown that looks like um, uh, it is a green bow. It, yeah, it looks like red like wrapping paper with a big green bow covering her cleavage. Yeah, and she's all like, "Oh wow, like." Do you, do you think maybe on this special occasion you can shower, brush the teeth, brush your teeth, any of that? You know what? That takes too long. Let me get the um, the bug spray or, or something like right, that. Right, right, because like... he's got like really, really wicked bo. Um, Al, so to in order to to uh, get all of these presents that uh, Al wants to, or Al is planning to to buy for his wife and his kids. Uh, he needs to go to the bank. But before we get there, um, uh, I think Peggy like goes into the bathroom or something like that. She 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 goes off off camera, and oh, uh, when it, when his kids come, yeah yeah. So so Bud there. comes in the room and is basically like, uh, yeah. So uh, I I know that you are probably struggling to to figure out what to to buy for your kids, but. Just so you know, uh, uh, Kelly actually doesn't love you. So uh, maybe and she's you never just... loved you, but you know who does. Yeah. This so, guy. May- so so maybe you should just buy gifts for me. And then he fucks off. And then uh, Kelly comes in. She knocks. And, and Al immediately is like, yes, Ke- come in, Kelly. Because he, he just knows, knows she's coming. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. 
Uh, so she comes in and uh, comes up with uh, uh, she she takes a slightly different approach. She's like, so I I just found out that I'm sick, and uh, the doctors called and said I'm dying. What what is it? She says she's dying of. Um, t- she. And she says she doesn't say it's terminal. She says it's terminus. Terminus. She's dying of terminus. But but she she says that she's dying of a like particular illness, and she says Bulgaria. Doctors, Bulgar. Right. Right. She says she's dying of Bulgaria. <laughs> so the fucking. The, I'm, she, I she's forgot dying the ongoing of, theme is she's really dumb. Yeah. 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 She so she's dying of the nation of Bulgaria. Doctors say it's terminus, and the she only has until Christmas morning to live, unless but she but she will be cured. If she gets a two hundred and eighty dollar Christmas gift, yeah, yeah. And so, besides, and then she throws in for good measure. And besides, like Bud doesn't love you, I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh the God, the kids yeah. really make it. Yeah, Flash the, out the... Uh, yeah. The the whole ensemble of this show is is pretty great, in my opinion. I. I I I really like every character on this show, including the dog. Yeah, Buck. Yeah, they characterize the dog well. E- even the dog has a personality. Like uh, in the next morning, um, Al's gone to work, and uh, the kids are fending for themselves. And Bud is like, "Good morning, sister. Would you like uh, what was it? Um, um, toaster scrappings." And she's like, oh, yes, of course. And he right. just holds it upside down and empties out all the crumbs. Right. As and someone... they lick their fingers and they right. lick it off of the fuck. Uh, so, Cal, me and you grew up, both grew up as poor kids. <laughs> I kind of, not necessarily to this extent, but like the sentiment here, I kind of vibe with. I vibed with that so hard. <laughs> like I said, we had, I, I've never done literally that. Yeah. But like... <laughs> Replace that with like the powder at the bottom of the bags of cereal. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I vibed with that pretty, pretty hard. And um, so Peggy, comes Peggy like uh, eats something from the fridge, but it's rock hard and she throws it in the garbage. Right. Because it's probably been in there for weeks. Right. No, no, she, no, she, she grabs something. It looks like a, um, like uh, a sub or, it Meatball looks like a sub sandwich. or a sandwich or something yeah. like that. And she takes a bite out of it. And she mentions that she's so, uh, what is it? She's, she's so like stressed out or something about this whole thing. She can't even eat that. She can't even eat. So she throws it in the garbage, like right but, in front of her starving but, but children. The, but the joke there is she bites into it first and it's either bad or it's rock hard. Then she throws it away and she says, I can't even eat. So right. it's, it's, it's not, Either way, either if, if it's bad or if it's not bad, and she just threw away food. See, see my takeaway, my my takeaway was. I think that you're right. It, it was fine. She just is like, oh, I'm just so like distraught, distraught. over this. I can't that, even eat. I can't even eat. So she throws away this like perfectly like good bit of food, like right, right. in front of her starving you're children, right. and her kids are like staring at, uh, literally staring at the garbage can as she throws it away. <laughs> Fuck. I forgot that both of them were terrible. It's not just Al. No, yeah, no, no. They're they're both awful people in their own right. Like <laughs> they're kind of perfect for one another. Yeah. I know what and happens. That's actually something that the show explore, from what I remember, explores in later seasons where um uh I think at one point in the show they actually split up for a little while, but they they, they got back they, they got back together because they kind of realized that they're both Oh, like, they just, hated other people. Everyone yeah, they're, else. they're they're both just as awful as each other, and they 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 realize that they both like hate other the same people equally. Like they both hate everyone equally. They're both easygoing, and they hate other people, and other people don't jive with them, or they take it too personally, and everyone right. else just sucks. Yeah, yeah. I always forgot that. Um, she talked about uh, Peggy talks about sex and wears like house robes and and stuff like that very openly around her own kids. Yeah, in the in the the scene we were just talking about where she like throws away the sandwich, uh, she's got Huge. some cleavage going on. Yeah, 
which even when I was watching this earlier, I was like, God damn woman. Yeah. <laughs> and she makes sexual comments about her husband. Um, you usually woefully uh, in front of her kids all the time. Um, and then later on when they get older, they, they absolutely jump in on those sexually inadequate jokes, jokes too. Yeah. Just cause um, the, the, there's a joke later on that uh, Al makes that like, really 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 made me laugh it's when he's uh uh witnessing his family uh when he's with the 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 angel oh but, well i know yeah it involves I, a football team yeah <laughs> and uh, what happens here oh at the table they almost have like a christmas revelation and they're like well shouldn't we try to get your father for something for christmas instead of just wanting things from him and uh, I think Peggy says that that just um, that just seems like too much work or seems too stressful or something. Oh, that seems too stressful. And the holidays aren't supposed to be about that. Yeah. Now, where's your father so, with his pre with the present? So they're, they're, they're all just really selfish people. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's kind of amazing. Um, so, all right. Let's uh, so to, to the yeah, store. Yeah. Yeah. So so to to move along. Um, so Al, uh, he's at work. Uh, he, he's at work. He he gets delayed. Uh, he he's doing a closing shift at the women's shoe store. He gets delayed because a bunch of customers come in, and um, uh, the the crux here is that he needs to go to the bank to take out all this money that he has this two hundred and eighty dollars that he had in the savings account that he yeah. had in the savings account, and. So because he gets delayed, he's late getting to the bank, but he gets to the bank like right at closing time. Yeah. And uh, it's the bank that Marcy works at. Interestingly enough, you can tell it's the exact same set as the women's shoe store. I was confused just, like, because they, I they, thought they, this was a time skip and this was the shoe store. Yeah, it's clearly the exact same set that they've just like changed some of the furniture of. I, I was yeah. confused for a second. I was like, oh, this is supposed to be the bank. Yeah, this is the bank. It's in the and same. They're partying moment, at the bank. Yeah, yeah so they're, they're partying, and uh, uh, Marcy like takes a shot or something like that and passes out immediately. The joke in the or recurring joke in the show is that Marcy and Steve are big are big squares. So they're, she, and they're lightweights, and yeah. yeah, so she takes like one drink and like passes out on the floor, and uh, so Al isn't uh, able to take out money. Uh, to buy his family Christmas gifts. So yeah, he goes they're all home. drinking eggnog, partying and stuff. Yeah, he didn't make it in time. Yeah, so he goes home and uh, breaks the news to his family. Uh, there, there's a, uh, there, there's a scene where he, where his family is like asking him things one by one. Yeah, we're going to yada yada the weird heist that he does at the end of the first episode. Right. He has like a, a a daycare heist that doesn't work. Remember yeah, because it doesn't like, it doesn't contribute anything to the plot. It's actually kind of wasted air time, it's in my a opinion. Filler for the end of this this episode because if this didn't happen, it wouldn't change the following episode at all. I, I actually, honestly, I actually think most of part one um, could have just been like ten minutes. Could it could have been three minutes? I mean, the, of, I feel like a lot of this show is of like the that. beginning of I well in this two parter especially, and maybe it's just because oh. the show, it, maybe it's just because the show is designed for a very much a twenty five minute like half hour sitcom structure that uh, a lot of part one especially just feels like wasted it could have been time. One episode it could have definitely been one yeah. episode. You could Agreed. have had you could have had all the crap with um uh with Al not being able to take the money out of the bank and yada yada you could have had that take up like the first like three minutes of an episode and then just focus the rest of it on him like dealing with stuff with the angel because that's kind of the most important part curious now i'm wondering why it was in two parts uh well it aired as a what it actually originally aired as a one hour special on uh december 17th so it aired as a like uh, a oh Christmas okay special. they aired together yeah, it aired as a Christmas special on uh, uh, on Fox in 1989. Okay, uh, okay. December 7th. Holy shit! So it originally... 
I think I mentioned this at the beginning of the episode. It originally aired on December 17th. Ladies and gentlemen, at the time of recording, we are recording this episode on December 17th of 2021. There you go. So this we, aired that 32 years us. ago today. <laughs> this aired 32 years ago today. 32 Crazy. years, exactly. Yeah, to the day. Um, not the first time that has happened on this podcast either. No, weird, weird. <laughs> very, Stars very line weird. up a lot here in laser film. And, <laughs> and as, as I, I know I've mentioned this before, but I love weird coincidences like that. Like, I'm, I'm here for it. I dig it. Um. Anyway, so too, yeah, so he lets his family down. Uh, he's they tackle him when he comes home. They tackle him when he comes home. There's like a, um, they they grill him about what's going on, like where the presents are, and he's just like, no, I don't have them. And then uh, his family is like disappointed in him, and he's like trying to. It, we cut away to the end of the episode where he's trying to uh, put up Christmas lights. Or he's trying to get Christmas lights turned on. He makes a joke. He's like, hey, he plugs it in and literally only one light comes on. I and love he's that. Like, and he's like, he's like, uh, and I'm paraphrasing, but basically he's like, you leave these goddamn things up all year round and you need them to work one night. <laughs> and this is the day that they don't work. Just and so just, that they, you can turn them on one night of the year and they don't even work. Yeah. <laughs> and... <laughs> I, I love that. Just Means that they never take them. I, I grew up around people who just left Christmas lights up all year round because they were out of laziness. So I yeah I I I, I appreciate that. That's an, <laughs> yeah I, I feel that yeah yeah um so yeah and he he's all like oh I wish I was never born much like the the uh, main character in it's uh, a a wonderful life. And uh, indeed, um, I can't remember how he does it, but he electrocutes himself. He electrocutes himself. He grabs a, a knife because he's trying to like pry, I think pry the Christmas light, like a staple off to like pull the Christmas lights down. Yeah. And he ends up, uh, elect electrocutes uh, himself. himself. And he's woken up by who I thought at first was Meatloaf. No. So I looked this guy up because... Um, as I mentioned, this show has a live studio audience. I don't know why which... I thought it was Meatloaf. <laughs> the show has a live studio audience, uh, as was very common with um, with sitcoms at the time. So the crowd went nuts when this guy comes on screen, as was really common with live studio shows. Like anytime there's a noteworthy guest star that the audience recognizes, they all like start applauding and going crazy. So I'm like. I don't know who this guy is, but he's obviously someone noteworthy. So I looked him up. Uh, this man's name was uh, Sam Kinison. Uh, he actually died on April 10th of 1992 at the age of 38. Oh. Uh, he was uh, killed by being struck uh, head on by a drunk driver in a like head on collision by a drunk driver. So. There's actually a comment that he makes. So he he's Al's guardian angel. Yeah. And he makes a comment uh, at one point in the episode that um uh oh what does he say? He mentions that uh 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 he mentions that uh, uh, that he hated his, like, when he was alive, he hated his fat wife and his kids. And then he sympathizes with Al. And he mentions that on his car, he had vanity plates that read hit me because he hated going home so much. And so this actor ended up, this actor and stand-up comedian ended up dying by being struck in a head-on collision. And the character here jokes about jokes about having license plates that say hit me because he hated his life so much there's <clears> um <throat> there's some weird happenstance there is all yeah, I'm that's some say. weird self-fulfilling yeah prophecy and uh, well, no that's not self-fulfilling prophecy it's ha yeah it's a coincidence it's happenstance but um but it's it it is kind of weird so he died uh j just a couple of years after this originally aired um and I, I had already read that at this point when it, uh, 
I had already read about that when it came to this point in the episode. So I'm like, oof, that's uh, yeesh. <laughs> Ooh, uh, that's piece, uh, dude. That that didn't uh, that didn't age well. Although apparently he was a pretty terrible person in his own oh. right. He um, uh, he actually was like a televangelist or something, and then moved into stand up comedy. So he was a preacher and did like sermons on TV, and then moved in transition from that to stand up comedy. Uh, sure. And he he made a lot of uh, misogynistic and homophobic jokes, and apparently was just kind of awful to to uh, women around him. So so rip maybe, in pieces, my dude. <laughs> rip rip in pieces. There you go. There you go. Uh, so so yeah, he uh, so the angel here. Uh, I can't remember if he's even named. I'm just gonna call him Sam. Angel. Yeah, Sam. Angel. There we go. Yeah sam in the credits uh, he's angel dude or something <laughs> as just angel yeah uh um, so, so sam's like hey, sam is is shitty yeah speaking of shitty, shitty. <laughs> yeah yeah he, he's, he, shitty he's not a good dude um yeah. and in so fact, he mentions he, he's... he explains that he wants to get his wings because it's really good with the ladies especially the girls that die young and go to heaven and i'm like uh, <laughs> Do you I mean, he would have only been he would have only been like thirty five at this point. So wow, fuck, he was younger than I was here. Weird though. Yeah, kind kind of weird. I'm like, eh, yeah, that that sounds like a the kind of joke you would see on a sitcom at this time. Fair, yeah, yeah. And um, what happens once he finds out it's Al? That okay. this is the guy he needs to help. He screams up at God. There's a lot of screaming by this angel. I'm not digging it. And he's uh, like, get it, off your it's his, freaking it, it, Nintendo, God. It, it, it's the actor's shtick. It, it, oh, it was, does he it yell was his, a lot? In... It, it was his comedy shtick, was that he oh, okay. yelled a lot. Okay, okay. So yeah. he he was just playing up his, his comedy shtick. So knowing that, I'm like, yeah, okay, he's just doing his bit. Whatever. You, you know when um, adults call all consoles Nintendo? Right. That's what that reminds me of. Get off your Nintendo, God, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I know someone who is our age who does that. And I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you, lady? <laughs> Calls every console a Nintendo. Yeah. That's weird. It, I thought it that is. was a boomer thing. Yeah. Oh, Christ. She's younger. She's like your age. She's younger than I am. And she calls like every game console a Nintendo. That means she's making a a conscious effort to insult people that play video games. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. And like, even uh, when I was in my early twenties, I'm like, I'm like, that's not a Nintendo. That's a PlayStation. She's like, Oh, it's the same thing. And I'm like, no, it isn't. Fundamentally, like in concept, sure. They are conceptually similar. Fundamentally, all smartphones are the same, I guess. Yeah. So in the way like, that all TVs are the same. <laughs> yeah. So let like let's let's call literally every smartphone an iPhone. Oh, because of the name brand, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she's kind of the person I imagine is kind of the person who would just do that anyway. Anyway, I'm not trying to to shit talk this person because she's she she's all right, and I've known her for a very very long time. Re- real quick to that note that you mentioned, um, some brands replace the item that they're actually associated with. Nobody um, calls um, like uh, tissue tissue paper like tissues or whatever. They say Kleenex, which is a brand. That is what is known as a genericized eponym. Oh, interesting. Which I've heard uh, a sledgehammer. A I, I've heard a number of people Sledges our it. age who called it a generic trademark. It's like, no, that's that's not the term. It's a genericized eponym. Oh, they're they're close. I see. Yeah, I didn't know the term for it, but yeah, like Kleenex. They just call all uh, tissue paper uh, band aid. Uh, band aid. I think it's yeah. I think band aid is probably like one of the best examples of that. Yeah, and I guess that permeates outwards into Nintendo. <laughs> I, I I guess it does. iPhone. <laughs> anyway, so anyway, so the the angel uh, tells Al that he's going to give him the opportunity because Al was like, "Oh, I wish I'd never been born," as I mentioned. Well, let's uh, check it out. And so, much like um, much like the film, it's a wonderful life. 
uh, the, the angel is like, okay, well, let's check it out. Here you go. Walk into your house. Interestingly enough, exact same house. Uh, the furniture is pretty much the same. Uh, maybe I didn't take a good look, but like maybe slightly less gaudy. <laughs> slightly less. Yeah. Um, still uh, like ugly 70s it, furniture. <laughs> Peggy weirdly looks like a waitress. Yeah, she's supposed to be. She's supposed to look like a fifties housewife. Right? Yeah, but but to but me, she kind of just like looks a like a, di- a a diner waitress. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah, instead like of a, her hair being big, it's still beehive-ish, but yeah, it's kempt instead of unkempt. Yeah. Uh, funny enough, they they have the exact same children who look exactly the same. So yeah, <laughs> so and that's, I, that's I, hilarious. I was th- yeah, I, I was thinking about that when I was watching this. I'm like, ha. Uh, but let's not take this show too, too seriously. And their names yeah. are the same? Their names are the same, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah let's not take it too seriously. But, so what's the deal? Uh, Bud is a nerd. Uh, he stands up for women. Uh, he faces off against bullies. He gets straight A's. He has glasses. Yeah, which, so you know I, he's smart. Yeah, smart people have glasses. Everyone knows that. Yeah, uh, and um, I mean, he I'm cares about them, his family. So. Yeah, That's he cares right. about his family. Um, uh, Kelly comes home, and Kelly, um, you had mentioned she comes home from college. Yeah, you you had mentioned like not finding uh, Kelly hot in this show. Mm-hmm. Um, the outfit she's wearing in this in this scene, I'm and like the way she has her hair done, I'm like, okay, no, still Peggy. I'm like, uh. <laughs> in this uh and i was like wait how old was she when she did this episode i need to google this before i can make a comment on it i I need to google this and she was like in her like i think mid-20s at this point early to (laughs) mid-20s so i'm like okay dodge the bullet no uh the uh innocent um schoolgirl thing uh unless it's a milf doing some role play doesn't uh doesn't do it for me Peggy uh, wins this round too. Typically doesn't do it for me either, but I do kind of like the uh the cute academic look. Oh, yeah, I, I see what you mean. This kind of like her hair is in a bow. You know, she's wearing like the, she's the wearing sweater. like plaid and yeah. Yeah. Uh, and their dad comes home. Uh uh, so uh so uh uh Lady Glitch co-host on uh her other podcast, Alpha Numeric. Uh if you're watching this, take notes. That's right. B-22 and star on a TV show in the early 90s. <laughs> uh, so, so, so yeah. Um, so, sorry, yeah, their dad comes home, which ends up being the actor that plays, replaces Steve later. So, uh, yeah, before, before we oh. get into that, uh, Bud... Uh, uh, makes a comment to to Kelly, which I did find was kind of weird. He's like, "Oh, are you still frigid?" That's not the right term. Thank, thanks for pointing that out. Um, yeah, it it, it seemed weird? really awkward. I'm like, one, like that's a weird com like thing to talk about with your sibling, anyway. But like, so I think he meant like, "Are you still celibate?" That's a yeah. That, which, that but it's that that is what a nicer he meant. way. But, but that's still weird to talk to your sister about it is oh, weird. sister have you engaged in sexual intercourse with men at college yet yeah fuck off you weird little creep uh and so uh she was like yeah uh, yeah yeah i'm saving myself blah blah and peggy makes the comment that uh yeah i saved my myself for marriage or whatever and al is like there with uh with sam and he was like he was like oh come on they uh uh she she was railed by the football team so much they retired her jersey number which made me laugh (laughs) oh so uh, now i wonder if that implies and then and then he makes that she's lying in this and and then he makes the comment that um uh why would anyone put up with her if she doesn't put out (laughs) but then i'm like which made again made me laugh, like actually made me laugh out loud. But then also, it's like, 
Okay, but like a, a recurring joke in this show is that you don't want to bone your wife. Yeah. So so. Yeah, there's so a, a... you married her because she's a slut, but then you don't. So so bone so you her. say that no one would want uh, to be with her unless they could bone her, but then you are with her and never bone her, and that's a recurring joke in this show. So there's a little bit of a cognitive dissonance there going on. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So the, the dad comes home and he is played by, uh, uh, Ted McGinley, who would later go on to, uh, star in this show as, uh, Jefferson Darcy, who ends up replacing, uh, Steve, Steve Rhodes on the show after, uh, the actor exits. And, uh, I think he goes, I, I think the character of Steve, if I recall correctly, he runs away on Marcy and like goes and lives in the woods or something like that. Cause he has like a mental breakdown. Oh, that's um, how they got rid of him. Yeah. He, he had a few like guest appearances later on in the show where he came back and, uh, but yeah, I think he ran off to live in the woods was how they wrote him out of the show. But, uh, uh, so Marcy ends up getting accident, like unwittingly remarried because she gets really drunk one night and like goes home with, uh, this dude Jefferson and, uh, it turns out they had a drunken Vegas wedding. Nice. which common sitcom joke but uh as someone who has been married it's a lot more complicated to 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 do the thing than uh, tv makes it out to be you can get um you, you can elope in in vegas uh it's still more of a process though like it's not it's not as quick of a oh, process it's not, as you, you gotta uh, sign as, things and you a, as tv and... and movies make it out to be like yeah. it's not a thing you could just take care of like in an hour on your lunch break yeah, you got to, uh, yeah, there's still signing of papers. There's still uh, proof of. It takes, it, it takes like, for me anyway, it took like a month of preparation. Hmm. Yeah, um, I actually knew people that eloped in Vegas and they were married by uh, Elvis himself. Wow. Definitely not an impersonator. <laughs> the, the, uh, the, 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 the man himself, the king, if you will. Yeah, they were married by the king, baby. And uh, yeah, they did that in like an afternoon. So kudos uh, so, to them. <laughs> well, uh, are they still are they still together? Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, good for them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who 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 says uh, love love isn't real or especially I, I when it's I, sanctified I, by? I don't know where I was going with that. The king of rock. <laughs> <laughs> uh what run dmc yeah <laughs> sucker uh, mcs should call me sire so what's the the moral of the story here um so basically okay their, so their life let, is let, so good that the angel so, that the yeah, angel so, so let's blow through it so yeah. the, the the crux of this uh this whole shtick is that their lives are actually pretty fantastic without al which i found quite hilarious i'm like oh the moral is of this story here is that oh his fa he's actually like shit to his family and his family is worse is worse off without him that that that's actually quite amusing to is, me is much better off without him and that's a very, um, and I think one of the reasons why this show works so well and was so controversial at the time was because that is very counter to typical uh, morality of sitcoms at the time. Right, I see what you mean. Like, instead of everything working out, it's just kind of like this air of light, comedic, everything's bad, but uh, you know what? They still have each other. Well, and it's, yeah, yeah, there, there's like a level of like uh, jovial cynicism to this show that you wouldn't. There see. we go. Jovial cynicism that, that you just didn't see in television at the time. And it's what one of the reasons why this show works so well, in my opinion. So, yeah, so his family is much better off without him. And um, uh, the, the Sam Angel it, Sam. Yeah, Sam, it like starts bitching that, oh, well, I'm never going to get my wings now because I was, he assumes... I, I was supposed to to show you why, uh, why your family, like why you'd be better off living. Uh, but I got nothing, man. Like your family is way better off without you. So I'm and never so going to get my wings And so he makes the now. assumption that Al will choose to have never been born so that they're better off. 
but al and sam makes, laments about it al makes the choice he's like no i want to live because my family has put me through so much bullshit that i don't want to see them happy yeah <laughs> They put me through so much crap and this is how they this is how they end up without me. Put me back. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. uh, Sam is rejoiced. He's like, because... oh shit, I'm so glad you're such a selfish piece of shit. I get my yeah. wings. I get my wings. Woohoo. And uh yeah. So uh he he wakes up uh on in in front of his front door. As his family is walking over his potential corpse in the over snow. his potential corpse and uh he he they uh oh earlier I I forgot to mention they decided to go to uh to Denny's without him. Oh because, because he had showed up with no presents. Because he had showed up with no presents and no money, but he's like, "Oh, well, uh uh, uh Peggy is like, well, well, I have eight dollars, so that'll be enough money for uh, three of us to get meals at Denny's, and so they leave without him. But it turns oh. out they didn't go to Denny's at all. Uh, no. th they um, uh, they went to like, what was it? I don't know, something like the Spud House or something like that, like the the Christmas potato special at the Spud House. Yeah, something something like that. Anyway, so they come back and um. Uh, basically talk about how Al has ruined Christmas for them once again. And Peggy does her typical, and this is a thing that comes up on the show a lot. Uh, Peggy does her typical, thank your father kids line. And they're like, thanks dude. Yeah. Whenever he fucks things up. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. That that's a recurring thing that I, it, I like it is that. a recurring thing. Yeah. And as they're stepping over his potentially lifeless body, they close the door and then Al comes in behind, right behind them. Yeah, like they don't even leave the door open for him. And when they had left earlier, he was mid conversation with them when they like closed the door. Yeah, because it's like, oh, we only have enough money for three of us to eat. And so Al, assuming he's going, he's like, well, since I'm the breadwinner of the family, I guess I get to choose who doesn't eat. And and they just leave without him. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's um, when he comes back into the house, he grabs Bud and he's like, Bud, Bud, quick, uh, making sure that it's actually him. What's more important, love or money? Right. Yeah, and Bud is like, oh, well, that's easy. Money. Because you can always just rent love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and he asks, what does he ask? Uh, he asks Kelly a question about um, something about oranges. Oh, I can't remember. Uh, what color is an orange? And, and she, Kelly's her like, answer is like, uh, do I have multiple choices? Multiple choice. <laughs> uh, and then like later on. Or do you on, just want me to answer off the top of my head? <laughs> and then like later on, she like, chime, at the end of the scene, she like chimes in with something. Um, Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, anyway, that that that's the episode, basically. And they all sit on the couch and. Lament about another uh, bad Christmas as Bud does what he did at the beginning and is like got straw packages up his nose or <laughs> something. Right. Yeah, yeah. Thank your father, kids. Thanks, Dad. Yeah. Um, and then it ends with like Sam, uh, Al hearing Sam talking to God at the gates. And he's like, okay, I'm back. Open up the gates. Right, right. I forgot about this. Uh, yeah, what it, what does he say exactly? Um, they're like, oh, well, we need to see your... Uh, he's talking to himself as if he's having a conversation, but we only hear Sam. And he's like, what do you mean you need to see my um, my passport? It's in my luggage. You lost my luggage? Ah, and he just screams, which, as you have told me, is like that comedian's like shtick. Yeah, he just yeah. Like, gets angry and screams. Yeah. I, I assume him bitching about uh, missing luggage was probably a well-known. Uh, I, I I assume it's probably like a, a was a was a well was a joke was a, a bit that he did he yeah had, was a bit that he did and yeah. uh, that's it it's a Bundy for life folks Christmas without presents is like Thanksgiving without pizza <laughs> yeah it's a it's a Bundy that, for life I, I forgot about that <laughs> whoa geez excuse me. <laughs> I forgot about that. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, so, uh, so <laughs> like yeah. Thanksgiving without pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that I actually, as someone who works, uh, who, who works in grocery stores, uh, during Christmas week, we sell a lot of frozen pizza, like a lot of frozen pizza, more than you would expect. So, a lot of people for Christmas buy frozen pizzas. I, uh, <laughs> today I learned. I mean, uh, I myself. Oh, I'm that's going why to... they're on the end. The, the frozen end cap things. I'm like, why is there so many pizzas on the the yeah, end pe aisles? People buy a lot of frozen pizzas for Christmas. Well, and as someone who is going to be completely alone this Christmas um, with nothing to do, not bothering to go see my family, because uh, if I'm being frank, they're not that important to me anyway. <laughs> yeah, uh, I feel that. The shout out to my family who is undoubtedly not listening to this, but uh yeah. <laughs> uh and yeah, as I mentioned, uh Christmas and Christmas Eve and Christmas Day are just on my regular days off. So um yeah, I'm just gonna be chilling oh, right. at home. They're just your normal days just off. Just my normal yeah. days off. So I'm just gonna be chilling at home. Uh take some Christmas cheer photographs. Uh taking some selfies, maybe uh FaceTiming with uh Lady Glitch from the Alphanumeric podcast and uh Watch a movie at the sync synchronize a movie watch. Yeah, watch it watch a movie uh remote, maybe record a commentary track, you know, that's uh and drink some nog. Dr yeah, drink some whiskey and some uh some so delicious coconut nog. So delicious coconut nog? Yeah, I, I so actually, delicious uh it's a brand of uh uh plant based uh dairy free products. They make a lot of uh uh dairy free ice cream. Oh, but okay. They, but they also make uh, 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 dairy-free milk, and they have um, a holiday nog that's that's really good. I like it more than regular eggnog. Uh, it also has like a third of the amount of calories in it. So, so it's, and nog has a lot. Eggnog has a lot <laughs> of calories in it. Uh, like, if you're um, a fan of nog, you're gonna gain weight. Yeah, eggnog, like one cup of eggnog has something crazy, like 400, like something like 400 calories in like one cup. So 250 milliliters. Like it's, it, it's nuts. Whereas uh, uh, So Delicious Coconut Nog has like 80 calories per cup. Oh, okay. So. The Nog, man. Yeah. Schnog the Nog. So drink that with some, uh, uh, mixed with some whiskey, you know, and uh that, that's well, this be is my... coming out before Christmas. This, this is coming out for. So, so, so what are your Christmas plans, Cal? As we're since we're talking about this. Oh, geez, Christmas plans. Um, Paul's on the weekend. You mentioned. Yep. Saturday. Probably next Saturday. Go see my partner's family and. Um, right. Do something along those those lines. Yeah. Um. My partner's mom is an incredibly good cook, <laughs> the opposite of Peggy. <laughs> and um, she always goes like over the top. It's like tons of different like foods um, from different like types of nationalities of cuisine and always has leftovers, always has dessert, always has like sparkling. <laughs> like cider of some kind so oh, pro nice. probably that's probably like in the works if i had to guess uh but if other other than that probably yeah like watching a christmas movie um i know that grand theft auto online always has like a christmas like weekend where there's mm -hmm. snow everywhere and you can throw snowballs at each other and the traction for vehicles is absolutely god awful because there's snow on the ground a lot of i don't know why i mentioned that, that. Yeah, I don't know why I mentioned that because like I've been playing GTA online and like years and years. Oh, I saw an, there's there's a new chapter out for GTA online and Dr. Dre is in it. That's why I know that. That's why it's on my mind. You know, Halo Infinite has been out for over a week now and I still haven't played it. The the campaign. I haven't the either. I haven't. The multiplayer it. has been out for over a month now, but the campaign came out on the eighth of December. But uh uh, I was kind of occupied. What? Uh, but I, I still haven't got to it. 
uh, <laughs> yeah, may, maybe this weekend. Maybe it's one maybe. of those things. I had near Automata like for like two years, and then when I finally played it, I was like, "Where has this been all my life?" Sitting <laughs> on the shelf. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to try to get to, to Halo Infinite uh, this week. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, what are you doing, dear listeners, for for the holidays? Yeah, let us know in the comments when you're listening. It's probably to, cooler than watching what we this doing. In, like, <laughs> in like July of 2023 or something Yes, like let that. us know what you have planned for the holidays in July 2023. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> uh, anyway, that was episode 16 of Laser Comb Podcast, where we uh, covered... Uh, uh uh episode 68 and 69 nice of uh married with children <laughs> uh best way to support the show go to patreon patreon.com slash lasercomb l-a-z-o-r-c-o-m-b where if you subscribe to the ten dollar tier uh you get to pick a show for us to to do this and talk about uh we straight we've up had... just pick yeah, you can just pick and we'll we'll cover a we'll still uh put it through our random number generator to pick what episode it is. The but, rand- uh, the the episode is random, right? The episode's random, but you can pick whatever show you want. There are the only rules to that are uh the show has to be over and it has to be narrative based, so no reality shows, no game shows, et cetera, et cetera. Um we we've discovered some real gems so far with that, uh including Dark Oracle and Fighting Foodons. Uh Fighting Foodons especially, uh I'm quite fond of shout out to our patron uh, Jared for uh, for picking that show, and uh, I, I, also I shout out to how Jared. well that was written. Also shout out to to Jared in general because he he sent me some uh, some heartfelt uh, messages on Patreon recently uh, yeah. in regards to some some life stuff I've got going on, uh, both good and bad. So uh, mm-hmm. yeah, shout out to him. Uh, shout out to all our patrons, really. Um, shout out to to Kay, our twenty five dollar patron, Game Sprite Mode. She's been with us for a long time. Yeah. Uh, Thank you that we we get a little bit of the the disposable income, and by we, I mean the expenses that put this this out there. Yeah. The um, the uh, the uh, I'm at a point now with Patreon where uh, I'm kind of breaking even. So that and that's kind of all I all my goal was where like where you can't podcasts, treat it like a job because it'll no, fail. Yeah. 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 So now I'm like, oh, OK, so with Patreon, I'm like, OK, I'm breaking even. So now podcasting is literally just a free hobby for me, essentially. To get it, to get it, get it out there. Yeah, to get it out there. Yeah. Maybe so, some young person will find this in tw- <laughs> we joke about like somebody listening to this in 2045. Yeah. Being yeah. Like, what the hell is Beast Wars? Also, shout out to uh, uh, shout out to other patrons. Shout out yeah. to uh, Bemused Horseman. Shout out to oh, Bemused Horseman's been with us for for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, shout out to uh, Willowberg. Shout out to uh, Lewis and anyone else who has been a patron before or will be a patron in the future. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. And uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, all of that stuff uh go to uh for social media go to facebook.com slash lasercomb central hub for this and all of the other shows that we do uh and uh follow us on twitter i am at lasercomb l-a-z-o-r-c-o-m-b once again is how you spell it cal you are also on twitter yes yeah neo cal n-e-o underscore k-a-l uh, we will be back next week with the final installment of our Christmas month, and then we're going to be taking a break from podcasting for the rest of the year. Uh, I put up a Twitter poll and uh, four choices of a show to review a Christmas episode of, just as I did with this. And what ended up coming up was this, what ended up winning the poll was the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. So I'm sorry, I forgot to vote. I don't, we're not supposed to... I... <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I have some alternate accounts. I could rig the process if I wanted to, but I, I, I am a legitimate journalism. Damn it, oh, I am an it. ethical, I'm an ethical podcaster here. So I, I try not to 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 rig it. Yeah, too much. I, 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 I also enjoy the like kind of like throwing it to the fates, essentially. And it's still choosing four. So yeah, ideally, none of them are something you loathe. <laughs> right yeah uh so super mario super, super mario show. brothers super show we'll be back with um i'm not even gonna bother looking up what episode it is now 
I just know that there's a Christmas episode of it because I found a Christmas episodes uh, wiki uh, wiki that lists, uh, which is what I've been drawing from for all of these uh, all of these Christmas themed episodes. What a gift! Whoever whoever's painstakingly put their heart and soul into doing that wiki. not doing God's work, doing Santa's work, doing right Santa's there. work, checking yeah. it twice. Yep. Uh, so yeah, we'll be back next week with uh, a Christmas themed episode of the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Um, and uh, yeah, until then, I've been one of your hosts, Christopher Siege. And I'm Neil Cal. And uh, until next time, thanks for listening. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy Merry Yule. Happy Hanukkah. And uh, keep your stick on the ice. Keep your stick on the ice, and uh, I hope that you have a Festivus miracle. That too. And uh, enjoy your Denny's feast. Enjoy your Denny's feast or white spot. If you're <laughs> if you're a part of my family, enjoy your 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 white spot uh, Christmas miracle or KFC if you're from Japan. And so uh, yeah, so you were so you're going to so you're going down to white spot the other day. <laughs> that's still running otherwise we would have covered it yeah oh i I, i'm glad that you picked up on that yes uh big fan of letter kenny uh when that show ends you best believe like we're we're gonna be fucking probably like the week after it ends like we're gonna be talking about letter kenny on this goddamn podcast if you have no idea what letter kenny is go google it and watch one of the cold opens (laughs) yeah if you're you're canadian it's on crave it's produced by crave if you're american it's on hulu so uh if you're from elsewhere in the world well BitTorrent is your friend it is uh anyway bye-bye bye, bye. bye.